Welcome back to Two Minute Tuesday. All right, Gantt charts, love them or hate them, they're essential in project management. So today I'm gonna to show you how to create one in monday.com. Yes, I'm gonna to try to do that in just two minutes. Start the clock. Firstly, you need a monday.com account. Click on the link in the description for details on how to set that up, but it is nice and easy. Next, you need a board. Everything on Monday is on boards. So if you don't have one already, set it up with your project tasks. No board, no Gantt chart, simple. Next, we need to add the columns we need to work with. Click the plus button in the column header section and add a timeline, which will show the dates our tasks will be starting and ending. Add dependency so we can add tasks together where necessary. And I'll convert the date column to become a deadline date. You can see that it's looking at the status field to see if a task has been marked as complete or not. Resetting that task status to working on it causes the date field to flag that it's behind schedule. A useful feature, but hopefully not one you'll see too often. You noticed how the board is broken into groups? Well, we can retitle those groups to represent the stages of the project. You may consider this boring of me, but I don't think people like to see a lot of red or amber text on their Gantt charts. So I'm gonna change the color for those stages to something a little less provocative, a nice, boring gray. Feel free to skip that step if you'd prefer to learn the hard way. Now for the dull part, data entry. I'm just gonna copy over some of the tasks from one of my old projects. You don't need to see all of that though, so. When you do this, remember to put dates in the timeline column. Any tasks without dates won't appear in the Gantt chart. And yes, I know that you wait and see a Gantt chart. It's nearly there, trust me. If you've entered your tasks and you realize that you missed something out, you can always add it by entering it on the add project section and then just dragging it to wherever you want it. Some of your tasks may actually be milestones. To set them as such, click on timeline and check the set as milestone checkbox. Stop the clock before we go any further, I have a gripe. Something that bugs me about monday.com. You see how it uses the green indicator in status to tell us something's done? Everywhere I've ever worked uses green to say you're on track, not complete. So you can change that by clicking on any task status and selecting edit labels. But be really careful with this. These buttons have functions attached to them. So don't create a new color for done. Instead, turn the existing one from green to a different color and then add a new color for green to represent you're on track. Feel free to rename the labels as you need. Okay, restart the clock. Now we get to work on dependencies. For each task, we click on the dependency field and hit the plus button. Choose the task that this task is dependent on, choose the type of relationship, and it's done. And notice that the more tasks you have in the plan, the trickier this part is. Keep that in mind before you dive in, especially if you have a lot of tasks. Finally, the part that you came here for. Let's generate the Gantt chart. Hit the plus sign at the top next to the main table title and select Gantt. And there you go. If it doesn't all fit on the page, hit auto fit near the top, or you can toggle the view by days, weeks, months, quarters, or years. Now for the fun part, customization. Click on the three dots at the top right corner of the Gantt chart and select settings. If you want to see the tasks grouped by their stages, select group by and choose group. You can add labels to your Gantt chart here too. You can choose from a range of options, though I like to select owner, just so I can see how everything depends on me. You can change the color by section to status so you can see your task status on here too. And you can toggle on dependencies and the today indicator in the visual settings. When you're happy with the appearance, you can make really good use of the Gantt chart in monday.com. You see, it's not just a static graphic, it's interactive. You can drag bars to adjust dates. You can click on bars to edit their dependencies, deadlines and owners. It's not quite as much fun as Tetris, but it's a hell of a lot easier than doing this on a spreadsheet. Speaking of things you can do here that you can't do on a spreadsheet, in monday.com you can capture a baseline of your Gantt chart. Hit on the baseline button, which opens the widget settings and click add a new snapshot. Now if, when your plan deviates, you can see how it compares to the baseline. Very useful. Once your chart's looking good, go to Gantt at the top of the page, select the three dots, and hit share settings. Whether it's for a presentation or just for you to keep your team on the same page, this is your moment to shine. And there you have it. It took a little bit more than two minutes. I will promise I'll do better next time. But you've learned how to create a Gantt chart in monday.com as quickly as I could manage. If you're interested in my opinion, I'm impressed with the tool based on my use so far, and I like it for what it is. But believe it or not, I have seen something that offers a lot more to the professional project manager than monday.com's offering and you can check that out here.